Hey, let's talk about batteries. All right, here we go. As I explained to you guys in another video, I got a bunch of these weird one-of-a-kind batteries, right? We get these small batches of batteries and sometimes they just stick around because they're like, that's a weird battery. It's like, there's not a ton of them. So what do you do? So they tend to stay there and then eventually I get to them. So I'm barely getting to them and this is a cool battery. There's only one pallet of these, so probably around 200 of these available and i want to take a look at it today with you guys to see what it is and how we can use it so according to label here it's a 36 volt battery 14.5 amp hours so it's about 522 watt hours so half a kilowatt hour not not bad for a battery of this size right um it's not too heavy and it comes in this extruded aluminum aluminium case for those of you guys from the UK that like to point out that I, you know, I'm not saying it correctly. Aluminium box or aluminum box for the rest of us. Um, it's this model, which I am not even going to attempt to read because it's like 20 numbers and letters. Uh, and here's the thing. It's from what I can tell. There's not a lot of info about this on, online. It's a e-bike uh, battery, right? It's got a connector and another connector. So it's got a charge connector, which is uh, XLR cable. And then this is the actual connection. It's got pins for data and stuff, but I haven't been able to find that. I was trying to like, oh, if we can find that connector, it would be great, but we didn't. But here's the good news. We did find the charger right actually we didn't we just found the connector and we just made a bunch of chargers because we have them <laughs> so should be able to charge it and then now we just have to figure out how to change this connector or you can leave it there add another connector that you can use for your own project so first let's take see if there's voltage on this guy multimeter put it on dc power okay so it seems to be dead or at least the bms seems to be off because it's only showing, uh, well, it's showing negative 4.81 volts. Yeah, I have it backwards, so I think that's why. So five volts, not even five volts. Let's connect the charger and see if we can wake this guy up. Let's plug it in, see what happens. Ooh, look at that. It went up to seven volts. But look what's happening with the charger. It's turning on and off, on and off, right? And the reason why that's happening is because this battery is discharged uh too far down right and so it's exceeding the the power output that this charger can do and so because this thing has safety features this charger then when it exceeds it it just turns itself off and then it turns on and it turns back off but every time it turns on just momentarily it adds a tiny bit of charge into the battery and eventually this voltage starts going up to the point where now the load goes down below the threshold of this and then this will stay on and it'll start charging the battery see it, we started with five volts now it's up to 8.9 it's uh yeah, just crossed about nine volts so we'll leave it there for a little bit and see if that works if that doesn't work then we'll try something else but i think five to ten minutes this will be on and it will be charging while that battery is charging i have taken another one of these apart uh, you take screws off and it just slides right off. And so it turns out it's a 10S 5P. I believe it's 5P. So it's 50 cells. And these are good quality cells. Look at that. They're Samsung INR18650 dash. <laughs> I don't know because <laughs> I can't read it because uh, the holders are in the way. But they're Samsung batteries. So they're good cells. They have a BMS and the bms has to a charge and a discharge um port on it and then it also has a data three three wire data uh connector in here that i don't know how to use but it doesn't seem like you need it to be able to operate this battery as you will see later in this video um so that's what it looks like on the inside i'm going to show you how to change or add a connector in here so that we can use it right but first we got to wake that one up 
and it's getting there look in, in just a little bit short time now we're up to 10 volts on the discharge port so let's wait until this charges up a little bit more all right let's talk about safety a lot of people will comment in the comment section of this video and say hey what you're doing is not safe you shouldn't way be waking these batteries up they're defective or something and there's some truth to it but not really if you look at the whole picture there's not right these batteries are so discharged because they've been sitting in a pallet for x amount of time i don't know months years i don't know and so they themselves they will deplete because the bms has logic that has to remain on to be able to keep the battery safe right now if that gets too low for too long then yeah there's a possibility that some of the cells some of the groups of cells will not wake up right and will be damaged beyond uh, a point where you can use them right but if that's the case, right, then the BMS, which we have no reason to believe that the BMS is bad, right? Now, it could be bad, and, but we have no reason to believe that it's bad. For, for as far as we can tell, the BMS on all these batteries are good, right? And the only reason why they're, they're so completely discharged is because they've been sitting there for a long time. But if one of these groups of cells does not wake up, then the BMS will not uh wake up and will not let this charger charge the battery right now can the bms be faulty in this? yes but then now you're talking about two failures right uh at the same time and so how likely is that well it could happen but it's uh, very unlikely right and so look just in the time that we're talking here the bms obviously now uh has turned on because now we see 29 volts on here and now we see a solid red light in here and so in a matter of a few minutes now it's charged the batteries enough to get past the the minimum voltage which is about 30 volts right 29.47 or 29 i guess that's the and now it's gonna charge um can this be dangerous yes everything can be dangerous but it's very unlikely uh that you can hurt yourself doing this right the battery is still together in its own casing which is uh made out of metallic substance like aluminium or aluminum and this is also a safe charger that puts out very little power it's only like two amps and so charging this battery at a rate of two amps you know uh i think the bms will step in if there is a problem one of the cell groups does not wake up or drifts too far apart from the group. And so then this will stop charging. But if not, then this battery is just gonna charge all the way up and then we can do a capacity test and see where the health of the batteries are at this point. You know, there's the other thing that maybe this is a usable pack, but it's kind of already too degraded. And so maybe it's not worth, you know, a lot because then it's they're at the end of their, of their life, right? But, uh, in our experience has been that these are they're still 90 to 95 percent good they have been put out of service for other reasons other than cell degradation right maybe the bike broke maybe the program ended uh maybe the the, the whole program or these devices or these bikes or uh micro mobility devices were sold because the company couldn't make money or they couldn't get permits for the city there's all kinds of reasons why these happen right but they're also sometimes yeah they're just they're just bad it was like you know one was faulty and then they were sent back to the thing and then that got put in there with all the pallets of all the good ones right but for the most part most of these batteries are good and you know i think uh that's what we're seeing when we're you know processing thousands of these things i literally have hundreds uh, uh, tens of thousands of uh, individual kinds of batteries, right? To put together, it's like a ton of them. And so that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna charge it up a little bit and then I'm gonna show you how to put a connector in here so that you can use it. Okay, now that this battery is awake, the thing that you have to do is change this plug, right? So that you can use it. So I'm gonna install an XT60 connector. And so it requires you, you can't just take these screws off and the connector won't come out because it's bigger from the back. So what I'm gonna do is take out this whole front and then drill a hole here and then we'll put that in there and then we'll solder it inside and then we'll get to use it. So here we go. 
this is the connector that we're looking at this big one here right okay look so the charging is fused at 5 amps and the discharge is fused at 20 amps okay so what we need this wire the black one here and then this one right here so we're going to drill a hole so now we can put this connector in here so you're going to have to you know disconnect it and solder it the first one we'll use some shrink tube then we move on to this one right here this is the positive we cut it peel it back solder shrink tubing okay and at this point you got everything that you need in here those cables are not going to be doing anything you just leave them in there now you put this back into the battery uh making sure that you use the uh you know install this rubber seal in there so you can keep the water tightness of this battery all right and there we go we added this little connector to discharge it we're gonna make sure it finishes charging now we should be able to put a little meter here there we go look at that so what can you use this battery for once that it's finished and working well it's an e-bike battery so you can definitely use it for an e-bike diy e-bike right but you could also use it to charge things like sort of these guys that are very popular amongst people um that want to be off grid or they just want a backup solution this is the blue eddy ac 200 you connect it on the solar charge port and then it'll start charging look 400 watts it'll take the half a kilowatt that's in here and i'll put it in there just in case you're running low and you don't have a place to connect it so you can buy a few of these you can you know charge this thing in full you don't need no dongle no no this is just a simple cable like that you could also use it to charge your ecoflow delta max for some reason if you need more energy than than this then you can just keep adding a bunch of these on the solar charge port and it'll start charging it uh yeah to 300 watts right now going into the battery right you could add a bunch of those and you can charge those you could also use it to charge the unreleased and unreviewed so far from me anyways ecoflow pro right this one has the same connector in the back just an xc60 and uh, here we go it's doing uh, about 300 watts right now even though the battery is 100 percent here but you can connect it and finally you could also charge your unreleased blue eddy ac200 max uh it's doing 500 watts just uh like the original ac200 all right so in the comments i from time to time see people asking me why do all my products uh and projects require for the end user or you guys to do things to it like you gotta solder a thing you gotta put it together why don't i just sell something that it's ready to be used and there are several reasons for that right it i promote diy that's what i do here i am excited about making things uh experimenting with things and so that is what I promote. And so if you are here on this channel watching my videos and you're interested in my projects, it's probably because you, like me, are DIY and have that spirit of doing it yourself, right? But if you're not, if you're asking, right, and you don't, are not interested in being DIY and you're not interested in doing any of the, or learning to, to do these things, then probably the reason why you're here watching these or are interested in my products is because you want to save money and the problem with that is that the reason why the batteries and the products and the projects that i'm doing are so affordable it's because they're diy it's because that's one of the benefits of doing things yourself is that you can do it for less money than buying a product already made right the the product that's already made has a lot of labor and yeah a lot of the times out labor is chinese labor and so that's why they can uh give to you for you know inexpensive 
Here, what I'm doing is here in the United States. And so for every little thing that I have to do uh, to a product or to a project, including my time, well, that's worth a lot more because the, the cost of living here in the United States is really high. And so labor in the United States is quite high. And so if you're having a, a trouble understanding that, then that, that's the reason why. The, the reason why things on my store and in my website uh, and the stuff that I promote is so affordable, it's because it requires you to do part of the work, part of the labor that it will take to get uh, a product finish and ready to work, right? And so that is the reason why I don't offer stuff already made because I would have to, well, be more expensive, uh, frankly, than the competition that uses offshore labor to build some of these, uh, you know, some of these electronic parts, right? And, and by the way, we do use electronic parts that come from China because China is the only one that builds some of this stuff. But, but in order to make it a fully functional finished project, then uh, you have to do some of those, some of the work. That's that's the rules the, which we operate here in this channel. It's a DIY channel, unfortunately. And if you're not on board with that, well, you know, I do review products that are already made uh, and finished uh, that are commercially available. So you, you could also buy those. You don't have to feel bad. You don't, you know, we all take choices in life. We don't all have to do the thing that we're doing. I just decided to spend quite a bit of time learning about batteries and stuff, but I, I totally understand if you don't or not, right? You just want to use a battery, good. Click on one of my other videos where it has reviews. I uh, explain to you why they're good, or I at least try to explain why they're good and why they're bad and why, you know, it would serve a purpose or one purpose or another, depending on what you're trying to do, right? So. There you go. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.